Goes like this. A man drove up in a white van. All these women got out. They had carpets rolled underneath their arms. And they began to shout. Does anybody fancy buying a carpet? Does anybody fancy buying a carpet? Does anybody fancy buying a carpet? Bob and Roberta Smith really comes from my uh, from my uh, sister, who is genuinely called Roberta. I changed my name to be Bob because I thought it'd be funny, and we did work together genuinely for a couple of years, doing performances and uh, making work together. But then she retrained and became a psychiatric nurse. The idea, in a way, is that anybody could be Bob and Roberta Smith. <laughs> My sister says that I just walk along the street and I come up with an idea and then I paint it on a load of old floorboards and rubbish. And although she says that it's a denigrating thing, I actually think that's a really exciting thing. And I think one should feel that one's got the power to say what's in your head and put it out there. Pizza box might be good. One of the really big things is that's important for me is the idea of uh, the idea of the street and the idea of uh, sort of cultural manifestation on the street is really important and uh, we've just walked past this and I do th think this is a sort of quite a throwaway statement but it's really good it says make the bankers pay for the deficit that they created I mean I just love that like somebody gets a spray can and writes no cuts <laughs> it's quite funny isn't it because what difference is that going to do uh, but uh, but it's, it's, it's personal expression, isn't it? It's fantastic. My father used to come to the East End to throw um, <clears throat> potatoes with razor blades, he, he reckoned, at the fascists. <laughs> and, uh, so I've always been a bit wary of the East End. And there are pubs in the East End, which are, well, when I first moved here, quite frightening. And still are, actually. I quite like this studio. It's in a complex called Cell Studios, and look, it actually has bars on the windows. <laughs> Slightly lethargy has uh, caused me not to leave this studio. When I first started doing it, it was very much based on a, on a font that my mother gave me, this uh, a, a book of 1930s typography that she gave me, and I photocopied that and made stencils of it and worked with those stencils. And then a friend of mine in America uh, he saw my work, an exhibition of, that I'd done, and he is an extraordinary sign writer. He's called Joe Amrine, he's an amazing artist. And he said, I could teach Bob how to sign write properly. <laughs> and so he said, come to America and we'll do a show and we'll paint it directly on the walls of the gallery and I'll teach you how to do it. And so I went and we made this show. We made it in about 48 hours, continuously painting, basically, just stopping to have coffee. And uh, he really taught me the basics and tips of how to do it. This is where I am at now with it. So it's very highly decorated, lots of lovely colour relationships. And I think about it very much like painting when I'm painting. I think, oh, I've done enough of that pink and it's working quite interestingly. So I changed to orange, although it makes no sense in the <laughs> inside writing terms, you know what I mean? Certainly a lot of my art is based on the idea of a very swift, direct communication with the public. Esther's Law is uh, really designed to promote the idea that we ought to have the same proportion of groups in society uh, in Parliament as exist in society. So the reason why it's called Esther's Law really comes from uh, a kind of artistic base, which is uh, a sculpture uh, by Jacob Epstein of his daughter, Esther. And he made this extraordinary sculpture uh, when she was 15, and he was quite an old bloke, he would have been in his 50s when he made this sculpture. And, uh, and uh, because of the slightly <laughs> misogynistic way in which Epstein carried on, he had five children, all with different muses of his. She wouldn't have known at the time that, that the sculpture was made that he was her father. And I was looking at this sculpture and there seemed a really unequal relationship between the artist, the sitter, the man and the woman. The main idea within Esther's Law is to promote the idea that we ought to have 50% women in Parliament. I'm not into uh, 
garnering uh, favour by saying I'm a feminist, I must admit. Uh, I do have an angle on what it's like to be a man, and I do know that men are a bit like the grey squirrel, in that they're incredibly charming, <laughs> but they just run, you know, destroy everything and take over. And I do think that's a sort of, that's a characteristic of men that you see in politics, you see in life generally, you see in the art world. And uh, that needs reining in. Yeah, it made me don't. make the, the series of four panels where I, uh, I tell the story of Esther Garman. And it's all on recycled materials from the gallery, basically. So I've done a few projects where I've asked the gallery to provide me with the materials from it, because lots of galleries use up lots of materials. I think it's important to play around with politics and have fun with it, actually. I've always thought it's important to undermine and subvert things. I like art scores. That's another um, preoccupation of mine at the moment, is that because uh, um, the Brown review into higher education is not only tripling fees to £9,000 for students, it's also taking all the funding, public funding, away from um, arts and humanities courses. So it's crazy to remove public funding for art schools. Yeah, I'm working on uh, these pieces where the word order's the wrong way round and the letter order is jumbled up, which have uh, slightly utopian uh, sorts of statements. That one says, even though, even though now I am completely bald with just one hair on my head, I am still growing that single hair for peace. <laughs> That's Where true, that there, there it is. <laughs> uh, it comes from being a bored person. But when I was a kid, um, yeah, no, I was a bit of a, um, I wasn't really a hippie kid, but uh, I liked all those ideas. Um, and, um, you know, I, w I did have a sort of John Lennon complex and I grew, I was trying to grow my hair for peace. <laughs> and it all dropped out. <laughs>